In 2021, I said that Yukudo Aitsuji achieved a rare feat with his first entry in the Mansion Murder series. As I described it, he bested one of the most influential mysteries of all time in his own pastiche of it. Arguably, with the sequel, Ayatsuji did it again, although I think the accomplishment is a little more manageable this time, as he lands in 11th place on review season. The Millhouse Murders takes the core puzzle of the Masked Man mystery, brings the ghostly hand of his architect arch-nemesis Seiji Nakamura, and sets the mill wheel turning. The Millhouse Murders opens as does the incinerator on its first pages, billowing corpses. A nasty incident the year before our detective arrives sees a woman die after being hurled from a tower. A fled suspect, and perhaps most horrific of all, the master of the house burned in his own furnace. Not exactly the way you expect an art viewing to end, but certainly memorable. Despite being haunted by the memory, the same guests who attended the previous year's horrors arrive a year to the day later to continue their annual tradition of viewing the Fujinuma collection. This time, though, the twist is the arrival of our detective, Kiyoshi Shimada. Drawn in suspicion over the house's link to the infamous trickster architect, Kiyoshi arrives with a storm in tow, just as the clouds had hurled rain the year before. Practically a castle, vast courtyard and all, the mill house is powered by enormous water wheels, self-sufficient for the reclusive Fujinuma Kiichi, who calls the mansion home. Wheelchair bound after a car accident some years ago, the wheels also operate the personal lifts that allow the master of the house to navigate his own home. But that can't be all they operate. This is a Seiji Nakamura home, after all. Built deep in the mountains of Okayama, Fukichi, in order to house the complete collection of his father, Issei Fujinuma's paintings. Each year, the son invites the same select few relations of the family to view the collection for just one day. Trapped in the storm with the suspects of the previous year's unsolved murders, Kiyoshi sets about unraveling what happened based on the testimony of the guests. With the events scorched into their memory like the finger severed from the victim's corpse, the testimonies are surprisingly consistent, perhaps rehearsed. Of course, that's for you, the reader, to determine. Sadly, despite a game of identities, crossed timelines, shifty narration, and a cast of elite socialites of differing ilk, you will find the novel a little too transparent. Several of the limited cast are barely distinguishable, the mystery can be easy to outright trivial, and you will find yourself wishing that Yukudo Ayatsuji would write a competent woman a few too many times. There are many great sins in this novel, not just limited to the characters and their motivations, but overall, the great triumph of the novel is the spirit. There is a curiosity and absurdity to the premise, an excellent sense of the macabre, and a looming sense of dread as you slowly start to realize the implications of your predictions. The actual construction of the novel, whilst not groundbreaking, is incredibly satisfying. It exhibits a strange sense of honesty, wherein its methods are so apparent that pondering them will become part of your experience in reading the novel. In particular, there are linguistic tricks that any Christie aficionado, possibly by the name of Brad Friedman, will immediately spot core fundamentals to the novel, and so the novel is forced to play a different game. As we explore the motivations of Kiichi and the way he bought back all of the paintings of his late father Issei, the novel questions us on why the final masterwork of the renowned artist, dubbed The Phantom Cluster, remains absent from the grandiose walls of the galleries. For its many missteps, The Millhouse Murders is incredibly readable, and the pacing is grippingly rhythmic as the novel jumps from the present day with Kiyoshi to the past story as the original murders took place. The story doesn't quite play for the cliffhanger suspense you might expect in a novel so captured by the gothic architecture of its setting, but that isn't to say it lacks tension. Even knowing the solution, rereading the story has the aura of a haunting, as the threat of a missing suspect in the original crimes seeps through the walls. Though largely disconnected from the core mystery, it's also a delight to see the motivations of Kiyoshi as he arrives in the novel. After his experiences solving the Decagon house murders months ago, his curiosity was piqued regarding the work of our late demon architect Nakamura, and the detective has now begun a quest to unravel the various mysteries each of these structures present. Unfortunately for Kiyoshi, as told by the remaining eight sequels presumably sitting on translator Ho Ling Wong's shelf, there are a few corpses yet to come in that quest. 
If you enjoyed the Decagon house murders, you might not enjoy the Millhouse murders, but the inverse is just as likely to be true, as is that you will enjoy both. There is no denying that this novel has become as powerfully influential as a foundational text in modern Japanese murder mystery fiction, perhaps even the key linking text to Honkaku classics like the Inugami Curse. It will not be the most challenging or mind-altering story you read from Japan, despite the reputation of its contemporaries, but you will see its charred fingerprints everywhere you roam. A much smoother read than many overcomplicated late 80s, early 90s Japanese mystery novels, this excellent translation brings the best out of a flawed story whose flaws rarely get in the way of actually enjoying the read. The Millhouse Murders, or Suishokan no Satsujin, by Yukudo Ayatsuji, translated by Ho Ling Wong, comes in at 11th for our review season recommendations this year. The book is part of an ongoing translation effort by publisher Pushkin Vertigo, but our thanks also goes to Locked Room International for first bringing this series to English, and our friend Brad Friedman from R Sweet Mystery for joining us on the show to discuss this one. If you like Japanese mystery fiction, please also check out Ho Ling Wong's blog and its many entries on the hidden gems behind the ever-shrinking language barrier. You're listening to Death of the Reader, your murder mystery world tour on 2SER 107.3.